a lot of people ask me where my cultural identity is based. I do feel a sense of home in Chicago and I don't think I'll ever lose my sense of being at home when I go back to Rio de Janeiro, for instance. But at the same time, I don't feel like I belong anywhere. Um, and that's good and bad, I guess. I think that my main attraction is towards sound itself, not towards music in a traditional sense. So I'm very attentive to sound, you know, any sound. I mean, I think that the best way to explain what I try to do with my music is really sort of reproduce the excitement of live performance. That's been my passion for a very long time. Can I hear exactly that? But same thing that we did at the beginning, making the whole thing legato. So, so I use a lot of extended techniques that create this sort of a surprising sound. What I try to do is create situations that those surprising elements and those individualistic elements sort of like pop out. So it is Monday today and yeah, uh, I have Eric Lamb staying with us uh, for the ICE concert. So Eric, yeah. can you tell us a little bit about your perspective as a performer uh, on Edgewater? Oh, Edgewater. Well, what I love about the piece is that like, I think it captures the essence of Claire, me and Claire's sort of um, performance um, vibe together. You I've know? known ICE for a long time. And those folks are my friends. I mean, a lot of them, when they come to town, they, they come to my house or sometimes even stay with me. Okay, so Marcos, I have a question for you. Sure. Okay, so um, we love you over in, at Ice House, and you're one of our, our favorite composers. Uh, um, and my question is, when you're writing for ensembles, do you have the performer in your mind absolutely, when you're writing for absolutely. them? I can't think of a, a composition of mine for the past maybe five or six years that I haven't composed, especially for the people who are premiering it. And it's such an informative thing. It's like, I I know you're playing. I know your sound. Yeah. You know, I have to so that degree of intimacy uh, between us really uh, illuminates my composing and really the relationship between the performer and the instrument itself. With Azopica in particular. Oh, Challenge go again, go again, go for it. Now. <laughs> The project is a piece for a medium-large ensemble, sort of like a upgrading of Aesop fables to today's moral values. So the first step of the piece was to actually select the text, which was actually a daunting challenge, just because there's so many pseudo-sources or pseudo-Aesopian versions out there. But once I had the narrator's line, everything sort of fell together uh, in a very organic way. So really the music was a response to whatever story was being told. I try 
try to approach the stories from an almost comical way and I was actually a little afraid because I think that one of the most difficult things in music is to actually use humor um, but the texts were so whimsical themselves that I felt like humor would be a welcoming tone <laughs> There is one story of the fly and the mule, and the, the fly lands on the mule's back and starts complaining about the slow pace of the ride and starts threatening the mule. <laughs> so what I tried to do was to, to exaggerate the dramatical side of the story, so when the fly approaches the mule, all the sounds are very small and annoying, very insect-like, but when the fly actually complains to the mule, the voice is very sort of low and, and monster-like. Because of the success of the premiere in New York, um, the folks from the International Contemporary Ensemble approached me and uh, suggested that I extend the work uh, to twice its length. And I am in the process of creating a full evening event, a 15 minute piece. So I'm very happy. Thank you for listening.